Daily Tech News Show is made possible by its listeners. Thanks to all of you, including Logan Larson, Jake, Mike Akins, and our lifetime supporter, Mark Olson. Thank you, Mark. On this episode of DTNS, does OpenAI really need trillions of dollars for the future of semiconductors? Also, is the future of X exclusive video? And Ann Pruitt tells us how social media helps or hinders him as a small business owner. This is the Daily Tech News for Friday, February 9th, 2024. From Studio Animal House, I'm Sarah Lane. From Columbus, Ohio, I'm Rob Dunwood. I'm drawing the top tech stories in Cleveland, I'm Len Peralta. I'm the show's producer, Roger Chang. And joining us is Aunt Pruitt, photographer, friend of the show, and creator, looking for gigs. Hi, Aunt. Hello. How you all be? We all be good. We be good. It's good to have you. It's all good. Excellent. Excellent. It's really good to have you. Aunt's going to talk uh, about social media strategies as a small business owner, which I know a lot of our audience will uh, will will really uh, really appreciate. But in the interest of time, let's start with the quick hits. Ring is raising its prices. In a company support article beginning at March 11th, 2024, Ring said it will now cost $4.99 monthly or $49.99 yearly to subscribe to the Ring Protect Basic plan. That's an increase of $1 a month or $10 a year. Basic, which is Ring's cheapest plan, gives you access to cloud storage of recorded videos from one camera or video doorbell. If you subscribe, you'll see the bump on your next renewal date after March 11th, unless you cancel before that. Apple is changing how persistent web apps or PWAs work under enforcement of the European Union's Digital Markets Act. The second beta release of iOS 17.4 includes code to accommodate the DMA, where PWAs have been demoted from standalone apps that use the whole screen, the shortcuts that open within the default browser. The register notes that this change will cause users to lose local data in existing web apps because web apps and Safari have different storage locations. And it will also break notifications because there's no way to enable notifications without app installation. Mm, a lot of people not thrilled about this change. Not at all. We mentioned on the show yesterday that Disney is buying a stake in Epic, a minority stake, but a stake nonetheless. The information now reports that Disney's $1.5 billion investment in Epic Games will give Disney a 9% stake in Epic at a valuation of $22.5 billion. That's down 29% from Epic's valuation in 2022 of $31.5 billion. Disney also announced a new AI-based advertising tool dubbed Magic Words, which introduces a new form of contextual advertising for the Disney Plus and Hulu streaming services that will also help brands tailor their commercials to fit the mood of specific scenes within a movie or television series. Disney said the feature allows advertisers to maximize the impact of their messages because it resonates with concepts that the viewers experience. How very advertising of them. In a statement to Axios, Meta said it will not proactively recommend political content from accounts that you do not follow on threads. This is the same policy the company uses to regulate political content on Facebook and Instagram. Threads users will be allowed to follow accounts that post political content, but the algorithm that suggests content from users you don't follow will not recommend accounts that post about politics. Reuters sources say NVIDIA is building a new business unit focused on designing chips for cloud computing firms and advanced artificial intelligence processors. NVIDIA currently controls about 80% of high end, the high-end AI chip market, with customers including OpenAI, Microsoft, Alphabet, Meta, the big guys. NVIDIA's H100 and A100 chips serve as a generalized all-purpose AI processor. However, the companies have started to develop some of their own internal chips to uh, overall lower cost and reduce energy consumption. So NVIDIA is coming back. All right. Well, speaking of open AI, sort of, uh, the Wall Street Journal sources say that Sam Altman, who heads up open AI, is in the process of raising trillions. That's trillions with a T. Trillions of dollars to reshape the global semiconductor industry with potential investors including the United Arab Emirates, helping boost the world's chip building capacity to expand its ability to power AI. All right, that all sounds like a lot of gobbledygook. This would reportedly solve constraints to open AI's growth. 
uh, because you need more chips to grow, including the scarcity of the pricey AI chips required to train large language models behind AI systems like ChatGPT. Now, Tom mentioned in his Tech Tom newsletter, and it's a good one, uh, subscribe if you haven't already, this isn't really about building a new chip business. It's about persuading governments, chip companies, and other organizations that have money to build more chip capacity because OpenAI needs the chip capacity. What do you guys think? This one is uh, really interesting to me. And I look at it like this. Uh, everything AI is really hot right now. So if any time is good to ask, now is the time to ask. This, this is probably one of the reasons that Sam Altman had the issues that he had uh, back in you know November, December, where the board kind of ousted him. But uh, because they were going after too well, much. Well, they too ousted fast. him. Well, yeah, they, yeah. Yeah, they didn't kind of. They <laughs> definitely did. But uh, th this is one of those situations where it, AI is so hot and it's not, we need this money to build a factory. He's talking about, we want to increase capacity everywhere on earth. So the best way to do that, when you're talking about trillions with a T, the only way to do that really is to talk to governments. And I think that that's where this message was targeted. Well, not only did he talk to governments, but he talked to like the big dogs when it comes to the money government, the UAE, um, this is serious business and it's pretty gutsy to say, hey, let's all join together and get this done. But what's not mentioned or really considered here is all of the potential backlash for all of the folks that are um, about a greener planet, if you will. We get a lot of flack about our, our cars out here that are running the combustible engines. And there's a big push even here in California for going to uh, EV cars because of the planet. But yet uh, we want to build this big, huge factory and there's a lot of resources that's going to have to be pulled to get this job done. And I'm pretty sure there's a pretty massive impact on the um, uh, carbon footprint, if you will. 100%. Um, Roger, I know, you know, we were we were all uh, kicking this around before the show and, you know, the idea of reshaping semiconductors. I mean, maybe that's the goal. You know, if you have enough money, sure, go go forth open AI. Ants uh note is 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 uh very real. Uh the fact that um these take an immense amount of power, you know, electricity, you know, all sorts of stuff that that pulls from the grid and it, something like open AI simply can't scale unless they have that, right? I mean, there definitely is a, a, a limitation or, or throttling effect about uh, around having not enough of, of these chips that they use in AI. Now, when you get into the topic of supply chain for chips, I mean, there are a myriad of issues you need to work through, uh, which, I mean, maybe he talked to, to, to the potential investors, talked to government agencies about uh, restrictions and, and stuff, but... You have a very, and I'm going to use this word because it was mentioned in a chat GPT article we did this week, a tapestry of conflicting interests that overlap all of this, whether it's geopolitical. If you increase the supply of chips, do those chips go to peop, uh, governments or, or non-government entities that you don't want having them because they in can integrate them into uh, either a weapon or some other you know, a competing device? Um, and then you talk, then you have like the, the, the actual brass taxes. It takes five years roughly to get a plant up and running and producing at scale where it's producing chips. And it really depends on which process you're using because it's not just an issue of getting the machines, getting the building, getting the water, getting the electricity. Uh, uh, it's also, I mean, that's the, all stuff yeah. that the money would help, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. with the infrastructure, it, it could, but like, it, could, it doesn't it, just yeah. happen because you have the money. Yeah. But like, and then where do you spend? the money right which area of the globe gets to have that uh, that that onrush of money because now you're now you're going to have a bunch of places like localities saying hey well, you should invest money with us not them because we'll build your mm -hmm. chips we'll sell it to anyone and then the people with the money like, well maybe we don't want you to sell it to everyone and then you have the whole the the whole business issue of just having a bunch of plants what happens when chips uh chip demand goes down now you're sitting on a factory that isn't making anything and costing you millions of dollars just to keep running 
or, or you know mm. what I mean? That there, there are business cases that are outside of OpenAI's business case that need to think about, hey, yeah, it's great. We'll sell you a bunch of chips. What happens in five years if OpenAI gets acquired or, or, or artificial intelligence goes through another change and it doesn't require this level of hardware? Now we're going to have excess capacity, and now we're going to have people undercutting each other trying to sell your chips in the same way that when you have an overcapacity of, say, steel production, you know, you have one country underbidding another in order to get rid of excess stock. You know, and and again, you have to consider who's going to benefit from this. As I mentioned in our pre-show, who's going to be working in this facility? Uh, how much are they going to earn? Is is it going to be a, a, a fair wage? Or are they going to be working 20-hour days? Or, um, all of that stuff has to be considered. And at the end of the day, it sounds more like just a huge benefit for open AI and not anyone else, or maybe I'm wrong. What are your thoughts? Well, I mean, I, I feel like if you are a person that uses open AI products, um, and you know, you're, you're bullish on AI, mm -hmm. you, you kind of see this on the surface and go, sounds good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's ramp mm -hmm. it up. You know, let's, you know, <laughs> let's open the floodgates. Um, but there's a lot that, uh, has to go into that. A great point. You know, who's going to work at these plants? Who's going to build these plants? Are mm -hmm. these plants going to be, um, it, you know, it, it doesn't make the most sense, even when we're talking about trillions of dollars. If you're talking about more than one plant, you're going to get there pretty quickly. Um, mm -hmm. Just a note, the Financial Times sources say that OpenAI's uh, revenue annualized uh, hit $2 billion in December. December of 2023. That was up from $1.3 in October of 2023. So... Quite a bump, quite a bump, even though the company itself had a, uh, a executive uh, shuffle going on in December. The company does now say that it thinks it can more than double that two billion figure by 2025. So again, not talking trillions, wow. but we're talking we're talking you know four billion ish. Um, and yeah, you know again, just one company doing this, but boy, if they get that, they get that investment, it's going to change the landscape. Like, what's even a unicorn anymore if you're talking trillions of dollars? <laughs> and just remember, a trillion is a thousand billion. So, it's yeah. a oh. lot of money. And they it's say a lot. trillions it's a lot with of billions. a T on the front and an S on the back. An it's S a lot of billions. All right, Rob, let's talk about X. What's going so, on at X? Let's talk about X, because about a month ago, Elon Musk declared X, the longtime home of brief text-based musings, it had become a video-first platform. Now, many believe that this was just another case of Elon being Elon and kind of wrote the idea off uh, simply something to get people talking about. But today, X and the WWE have partnered to make X the exclusive home of the WWE Speed. It's a new weekly series of time matches, I believe they're five minutes featuring, or five minutes or less, and they feature your favorite WWE superstars set to launch this spring. Now, this is in addition to you know video deals that X has struck with Paris Hilton, Tucker Carlson, Don Lemon, Tulsi Gabbard, Jim Rome, just to name a few. And X is also working to incentivize top line or should say top online creators to post on the platform through improved ad revenue share deals. Uh, if you guys remember back in, uh, I believe it was the end of last month, Mr. Beast uh, tested posting or reposting one of his videos on X and that video made over $260,000 in the time they were doing the test. Now, Mr. Beast did say that he thought it was a bit of a facade because he thought that advertisers were basically buying uh, that particular video in particular because they knew that it was going to be popular. But it, it kind of gets the question, you, you, you know, you really have to start thinking about this. Do we need to start thinking about X in terms of like a YouTube or TikTok or Twitch or an Instagram when it comes to creating short form or maybe not so short form uh, video content? Uh, Mr. Rob, can you help me understand Mr. Beast's uh, his 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 experiment? Was it just. Was it a native posting there on the platform? Or? So they, they took a video that they had already shot for, mm -hmm. for YouTube, but they did repurpose it for Forex. So I think okay. that, you know, there might have been some additional editing and stuff like that for the platform. Mm -hmm. And it did incredibly well, like you would expect it to. There were even folks who were saying that uh, the X was, you know, artificially inflating it. But uh, Mr. Beast, as I said, he came out and said that it's probably because people knew that the video was going to be popular on that platform and they just bought, uh, you know, more uh, yeah. space to run, uh, you know, next, next to that. 
But so, yeah, he's the biggest YouTuber on earth doing this. But there's going to be smaller folks who are going to look to this platform as well. If, if, if X is doing better deals, clearly people are going to go to X. Yeah. I mean, so I'm just curious, is this going to be a real thing for them? Is video going to be a real thing? And um, are you a WWE fan? Not like I used to be back in the old eighties, but I gotta tell you, uh, <laughs> but you know, maybe are, more that more than somebody deep. who's not at all. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it, that 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 WWE runs deep for that fan base. They it, are it, hardcore, and they will do whatever that brand asks them to do. If it means downloading a new app on their phone called X that they've never had or even thought about, I guarantee they're going to do it. Um, that is. That's what I think, you know, these exclusives for fans who are, you know, if you're a fan, you're really, really a fan. Right. This is if if you can only get like fun WWE speed content on X, that's where you're going to go. Um, and yes, as you mentioned, Rob, there are other uh, kind of celebrities and people in media who have struck deals with X for certain video content. Um, this reminds me of, I don't know, the like cord cutting wars that we're going through mm. right now. It's like, mm. where do you want to yeah. watch your content? Do you want to watch it on X? Do you want to watch it on TikTok? Do you want to watch it on Instagram? Do you want to watch it on Blue Sky? Do you want to watch it somewhere else? As a consumer, you don't really care. You're just like, tell me where to watch it. And that's where I'll watch it. And if I have to pay too much, I'm going to be mad about that whole thing. Yeah. Th what this is why... Is Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, go, go ahead, Ant. Go ahead, Ant. Well, I, I, I'm going to sound like a bit of a Luddite or an old man here, but this stuff still just sort of blows my mind. The idea of consuming content, long content on social media, uh, which is most of the time on a computer or on a mobile device. Um, but at the same time, Apple put uh, the first episode of Silo, Hugh Howie's uh, series, up on Twitter last year, and it got millions and millions and millions of views. And I'm like, who in the heck is watching this stuff on X? But I, I guess that's the new thing. Are, are you all watching stuff on your mobile devices or are you spending the time on the couch like myself and watching it on a regular size television? I mean, it's a little of everything. Yeah, but again, both. like that kind of, it, it's like, it depends. Like if yeah. you and were like, hey, if you've seen Silo, here's how you watch it you have to watch it on X. I'd be like, okay, I'll, that's what I'll do. Oh, but it's wow. kind of annoying, right? Because yeah. maybe I'm sitting in my living room being like, can I just do everything right, on my right. smart TV? Right. So do you guys remember Quibi? I think it came out in like oh, 2018 yeah. and then died in 2020. I think it was like six, seven years too soon. Um, because I, I honestly think, I, I know for a fact that, that, that WWE fans, they are some of the most loyal fans on earth. And there are people who may not have even heard of X, but if they think they can get some more WWE content on this thing called X, they will download that app for no other reason than to just watch that show. So from that standpoint, that is a real smart buy as far as X is concerned. That's a, that's a real smart deal because they know they're going to get eyeballs, uh, you know, watching these five minute or less matches. Mm -hmm. Wow. Wow. It all blows my mind. So, folks, let's uh, let's change the gears a little bit. So if you want to watch uh, Tom's Top 5, the show where Tom breaks down the top five things you need to know about technology, this week Tom counts down the top five tech headlines from 1924, 100 years ago. You can catch it at Daily Tech News Show on TikTok, at DTNS Picks on Instagram, and YouTube at YouTube.com slash Daily Tech News Show. All right. Social media been under the microscope lately. In fact, uh, as early uh, as recently as the show. And everybody seems to have an opinion on which platform is best, which you be using the ones you maybe shouldn't be using. But if you're running a small business, social media is not only important, but maybe the most important tool to connect with potential customers and clients and your approach might be a little bit different depending on who you're hoping to reach. Now, Ant, we've got you here today, and we're glad mm -hmm. because you're in the middle of expanding your photography business. Yep. So yep. what sort of considerations do we take into account when we're in your situation and we have social media tools at the ready? 
Well, see, for, for myself, the situation turned into I am starting from scratch. You know, being here, I moved here uh, from Carolina in 2019, and I left a lot of my book of business back on the East Coast. So I didn't mm. have everything here. And you're, you're and, for anybody who doesn't know, like you're in NorCal. Yeah, right? I'm in NorCal. And, yeah. and the thing is, starting from scratch in this brand new area with no family here and, you know, just a handful of friends, it is a challenge to, to put yourself out there. So the first thing that, that comes to mind is you need to jump on social media because that is one of the easiest way to do marketing without going out trying to hire a firm and the firm looking at you like we don't know who you are we don't care who you are so we're not going to promote you you need to promote yourself and social media is free to do that the problem is not all platforms are created equally and some platforms people don't even really care about uh i, I wrote a blog post the other day about blue sky when they announced that they're now open and not necessarily doing the whole invite only kind of thing and it made me wonder, do anybody really care about that, especially people that are in small businesses and trying to get a bigger book of business? Uh, because in my opinion, and I'm going to go ahead and apologize now, Daily Tech News fans here, uh, Blue Sky is a little bit too technical and a little bit too nerdy for normal folks out there. So I don't know that they're going to flock to it. And I think that might be quite all right, because maybe their audience isn't there. But again, you could say that about X, you could say that about Instagram, you said about TikTok. Everybody shouldn't be on TikTok, even though TikTok is massive and getting a lot of traction. But your audience may not be there. And that's the type of stuff that you have to consider when it comes to marketing. Where's your where's your 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 tribe, if you will? Yeah, I mean, I, when you talk about TikTok, I have a TikTok account, mm -hmm. I consume you know, a fair amount of TikTok content, you know, just because I want to know what's going on. I don't feel like I can make TikTok uh, content that other people are going to love. You know, maybe it's not that I, you know, I'm not capable of trying, but I'm just sort mm -hmm. of like, there are only so many hours in the day. You kind of yeah. have to choose your place. Like, if you, uh, you know, you aunt want to further your photography business, it's like, where are the photo folks, mm -hmm. you know, like where, where is that tribe? You and I that. think it, yeah, it's, it, it's, it's, I guess better than ever that we have so many options, but it's also harder than ever to be like, let's collate all these folks. Let's, you know, let's get to like one little subreddit where we all talk about the same <laughs> thing all day. Well, it is harder because we do have all of these different platforms out there to consider, but fortunately there are some tools out there to make it easier to sort of uh, post once and it goes everywhere. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, myself, I do that. And there's a lot of times where one post is going everywhere. And there's a lot of times where that post is only going to specific platforms because I've sort of figured out by looking at analytics of the platform as far as what people are clicking on, what people are commenting on or resharing, reposting and what have you, because all of that stuff matters when it comes to converting them into a paying client. Uh, I sell prints. And I know exactly where my prints get the most clicks. And that, that usually equates to more sales because the more clicks are over there. And that platform is X. Most people will say, you should do this on Instagram. Mm, well, Instagram hasn't done squat for my photography. You kind of have to follow the money. Yeah. Right? <laughs> but yeah. I, I post to X. Um, LinkedIn used to be my favorite platform because I got nothing but direct calls from there. You know, people were, especially at the beginning of the year, new headshots, call your boy up. I got you. Perfect on LinkedIn. Yeah, as, as, a, as a small business owner myself, I, I have basically looked at social media as I'm going to go with one or two platforms that I kind of rock with and kind of have found an audience. And that's just what I roll with. Now, there, now, I may use some of those third party tools to post kind of everywhere, particularly when it's text. Text is fairly easy to kind of put on all platforms uh -huh. that accept text. It gets a little bit wonkier when you're trying to do short form video and stuff like that. 
But ultimately, I think that it just kind of makes sense to go where your audience is. And I know there's a lot of folks who are on mm -hmm. Mastodon, who are on Blue Sky. That's, the, you know, that's in the news this week. Mm -hmm. um, but when, I, when I've gone to the platform, there's just not enough people that I actually talk to. Yeah. And I'll be honest, I'm just not willing to do an enormous amount of work to try to find an audience on a platform that only has, you know, a couple million people. Yeah. If you have a couple hundred million, then that work to me is, is more beneficial. Um, so like I said, I know, I know folks are saying the trends is like, I, well, I really like this, but it's like, yes, but you know, even with blue sky adding, I guess it's close to 2 million users in the last couple of days, mm -hmm. that's still a rounding air compared to even threads. that just came out not even a year ago. I mean, it just came out in July of last year. Mm -hmm. Um, and clearly threads had the Instagram hookup to where they were able to just kind of port those accounts over. Yeah, they, but they when really you're talking easy. about critical mass, you kind of have to go where just most people are. So for the conversations that I'm having, I can have, and I've had great conversations on Mastodon. I've, I've had a conversation or two on blue sky mm -hmm. but most of my people are on instagram most of my people are on x most of my people are on thread so that tends to be where i'm going to spend most of my time now i'm of the mind of don't just throw these different platforms away at least try them for a little bit you know because you never know something may spark but again try it for a little while to get enough data to see if it's worth your time or not you know, because maybe one day Blue Sky is going to get pretty daggum big. Who knows? I I don't know if I'm there yet because if I open up Blue Sky and search for Apple, what I will find is people talking about Apple, but I won't find an official Apple account. If I go in there and search for Taylor Swift, I will find people talking about Taylor Swift, but I won't find an official Taylor Swift account. Mm -hmm. um, so if they're not over there, it, it's... I can't say that I can put a lot of faith in it being fruitful for me if because those people draw the masses. You know what I mean? Yeah, they do. I mean, Rob, you've also, you know, you've talked about just kind of like on the ground marketing, wear a t-shirt saying, ask me oh, about man. my podcast. And that has actually turned into a lot of people knowing about yeah. the podcast that you do. That's right. Absolutely. And, and here's one of the things I do want to make sure that folks understand this and I believe, and I don't want to put words in your mouth, but you're coming to this from a, for a small business person right. standpoint, right. not necessarily just where do you personally rock? And that's definitely how I look at social media from a small business person standpoint. Right. You kind of have to go where there's just eyeballs because you're ultimately trying to generate leads at the end of the day. That's and it. if just a, if there's a, you know, decreased number of people on a platform because it's new or just came out, you're just not going to do as well as you would on a platform that has hundreds of millions of people on it. Yeah, I can't say I'm going over on LinkedIn just to chat about the Super Bowl that's coming up this weekend. I can't right. do that on that platform. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, you could. I you could, could, but I'm probably going to get laughed off that platform. But if, if I'm over there to talk about, all right, folks, this is the beginning of the year or you're getting ready to get that new gig or you're thinking about um, or changing careers or what have you, Look me up. Let's work on your, your brand and, and, and make sure your photos look good. And let's work on some videos to help promote yourself. That's what I'm going to talk about over there because it's all about booking more business for me so I can continue to pay bills and eat. There you go. Because I yeah. like to eat. Small business owner. <laughs> you know, we're, we've all been there. Uh, speaking of small business owners, let's check in with Len Peralta, who has been drawing. <laughs> Uh, tech story that we've yes, been talking yes. about. Which one did we choose? Well, you know, I am a big proponent of social media, uh, and I use it for myself for my uh, for my art stuff. But I mm -hmm. fell off big time. Um, just in general, I've been busy, but also I've kind of lost interest in social media, which isn't great for uh, when you're looking to. Uh, uh, to talk about Make connections. your business. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But this image I drew today is called anti-social media, which is, you know, this is kind of how I feel, you know? I just don't <laughs> give a darn about any of these places because there's no engagement. There's nothing. And uh, so 
I, that's why I love being on DTNS because it's the one time where I actually am able to talk about my stuff and and hey, it's it's worked up to a certain point. Um, I love and, that. That's Not that awesome. people don't like elephants or apps <laughs> no, or no. clouds. It's just they just it's don't. It's just know. you know you just you, you know again so many hours in the day. Oh, exactly. Thank uh, you. If Lynn. they if yeah, they want to get this, know. by the way, let me do the social media thing. If they want to get this. Um, they can go to my Patreon, patreon.com forward slash Len, or if they just want to support me at my online store, it's lenperaltastore.com. And look for me online if you can. It's Len Peralta, at Len Peralta everywhere. And, uh, you know, hopefully we'll engage at some point. So, Well, thank you, Len. And also thank you, Aunt Pruitt. So, Aunt, tell the folks where they can get at you. How can folks find you online and what, what are you doing these days? Uh, yeah, you can check me out on my website. Uh, I prefer that you go to antpruitt.com slash blog to keep up with everything that I'm doing there. You can even sign up for my quote unquote newsletter. I can't even really say newsletter because I feel like I'm discrediting people that do newsletters really well, like Mr. Tom Merritt. But you can go there to sign hey, up. Hey, you got a up. newsletter? Rock it. <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> But yeah, go there and check out everything we're doing. And I'm on the social medias. I am int underscore Pruitt pretty much everywhere. Patrons, stick around for the extended show. Good day, Internet. It's time again for the great GDI debate. Join us as we try to answer the most confounding questions of all time ever in the universe. Oh, boy. It's Friday. It's going to be fun. <laughs> Just a reminder, though, you can catch the show live Monday through Friday at 4 p.m. Eastern, 2100 UTC. You can find out more at dailytechnewsshow.com slash live. And we'll be back from the weekend on Monday talking about what happens when purchased copies of digital media get removed with Shannon Morris joining us. Talk to you then. This week's episodes of Daily Tech News Show were created by the following people. Host, producer, and writer Tom Merritt. Host, producer, and writer Sarah Lane. Executive producer and booker Roger Chang. Producer, writer, and co-host Rob Dunwood. Video producer and Twitch producer Joe Kuntz. Technical producer Anthony Lemos. Spanish language host, writer, and producer Dan Campos. Science correspondent Docky... Dr. Nikki Ackermans, social media producer and moderator Zoe Dutterdine, our mods, Beatmaster, W. Scott is One, BioCow, Capt Kipper, Steve Guadarrama, Paul Reese, Matthew J. Stevens, aka Gadget Virtuoso, and JD Galloway. Mod and hosting by Dan Christensen. Music and art provided by Martin Bell, Dan Luters, Mustafa A., Acast, and Len Peralta. Live art performed by Len Peralta. Acast support from Tatiana Matias. Patron, Patreon support from Don McNeil. Contributors for this week's shows include Allison Sheridan, Scott Johnson, and Justin Robert Young. Guests on this week's shows included Ann Pruitt. And thanks to all our patrons who make this show possible. This show is part of the Frog Pants Network. Get more at frogpants.com. Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>